Hello beautiful women of God. This is day 12 of your devotionals and I hope that you are enjoying this. I want to continue on the topic of putting God first and this time I'm going to read a portion of the Bible that places your worries under God's power and influence and will not control you anymore. Worry is very very serious worry is when your imagination has a picture of the future anticipating the worst we anticipate that things are going to get worse that things are not going to work out we anticipate that we will not have what we need and it is our imagination that starts to develop a movie inside of what the future will look like and it's almost never a positive movie and in what you picture when it comes to worry fear gets involved immediately which as you know it is the number one enemy to our faith worry should not be the lifestyle that we accept and we have to take authority over our thought life we have to come against it with a word because just like worry tries to take over your imagination God also wants to take over your imagination God also wants to give you a picture of the future God also wants to give to you more than you can think ask or imagine according to the power that works inside of you so today as we talk about worry I want you to see it where does it hide because it happens to all of us worry is always knocking on the door I believe that it is a consistent battle that we all have what we do with it is what makes us different from the world how we react to it how we respond to it what we do next just like you peep in your door to see who is knocking. Before we open the door to wrong thoughts in our mind, peep through there and really make sure that it is something you want to build a nest in your head. Worry is not something we should allow. It's destructive and it can build up inside of you and create other problems in your health, other problems in your emotions, and not allow you to focus in the workplace, not allow you to sleep at night. It could hurt in your relationships, making you grumpy, making you edgy, and all of that affects everything around you. There's absolutely nothing positive about worry. I know we all worry, I know it's a human thing to do, but it's not something we should tolerate. It's common, but it's not right. So today I want you to make a decision. The first decision to make is to go against it. Don't cooperate with worry. Don't collaborate with worry. Don't make worry the reason why you want to have a cup of coffee with a friend and magnify worries to each other. Catastrophic vocabulary makes worry worse. When you say, this could be the worst month of my life. Those words are catastrophic. We are blowing up our situation. Magnifying the Lord makes God bigger in our thoughts, anticipating His power, anticipating His faithfulness, anticipating His victories. But when we use language that makes our problems bigger, fed, by worry, anxiety, and fear, we're gonna get in trouble. And it's much harder to get out of it once you already have it in your conversations. I remember a long time ago, I heard Dr. Murdoch say that we must deal with our thoughts when they are the size of an acorn. Don't wait until the acorn becomes an acorn tree. Once it's a tree, 
once it's planted, rooted, growing and producing fruit, now you have a huge problem. It's much easier to deal with a thought when it is the size of an acorn than to deal with a tree. Now it takes a lot of work to root it out of your life. When do we start going against worry on the first thought? Immediately. If you have to speak against it on your, by yourself, many times my daughter looks at me and says, are you talking to yourself? And sometimes I tell her I'm praying. You have to use your mouth to attack your mind. Your mind cannot attack uh, its own thoughts. Your voice is a weapon against your thoughts. Even more powerful than listening to a preaching or listening to worship or listening to something else, you have to disagree with your thoughts immediately. Tell them it's not true. I will live in peace. I will have success. God is with me. I am not alone. And you attack a thought with the weapon of your voice, especially putting God's word in your mouth. Where is worry trying to attack you today? In what area? Matthew chapter 6 talks about worry in the area of finances. In the area of the day-to-day -day needs, which seems very relevant to us right now because the smallest needs that we cannot live without are so hard, such as gas. Without gas, you can't do anything. And something so simple, it seems to be a luxury for many right now. And I want to tell you, when the economy goes crazy like that, you and I must have trust in the Lord stronger than ever because no matter what the economy says, God has not changed. He's still the source and He's still Jehovah Jireh and He's still your provider. And Psalms 23, 1 is still as truth as it was when gas was very low. The Lord is your shepherd and you will not want so Matthew if you want to go there in your Bible Matthew chapter 6 starting in verse 25 and this is the King James translation but I would encourage you to study other translations verse 25 it says therefore I say unto you take no thought remember thoughts is where all of these battles begin Take no thoughts for your life. What shall, what ye shall eat? What ye shall drink? These are questions that arise inside of us. Oh my God, how am I going to pay my bills? Oh my God, how are we going to get food for this month? Oh my God, how are we going to have the right, the basic needs of life? And those questions arise inside of our minds, asking ourselves like we have the solution, right? And it says, not, nor yet for your body, what, sh what shall put on? In other words, what am I going to wear? Schools are coming. It's expensive to buy new clothes for your kids and making sure every, everybody has what they need. But these are questions that arise inside of us. Is not the life more than meat and body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? God is wanting to give you a picture that birds don't work, they don't sow, and they don't reap. He's talking to a specific group of people in a specific industry where farming is part of their jobs. He's talking to farmers, people that live from their crops. And he's trying to pull their attention and saying, do you think that's the only way to live? That if you sow and you reap, you eat. But if you don't sow and you don't reap, then you don't eat. You think that if farming goes out of business, you won't have food? He's telling farmers this story. And then he says, look at the birds. Do you think they eat? Who feeds them? I do. 
I feed them. And then he asked a question, do you think you're more important than they are? And look at this family, God is introducing something about himself. Verse 28 says, And why take ye thought for raiment or clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. In other words, they're not working in fashion. They're not sewing their garments. I'm sure when Jesus was teaching this, there were women, that that was their work. That was their job. And saying, look at the flowers. They don't toil and they don't spin. They did not have to work to look so beautiful. And you are worried about how you're going to dress? And God says, no, 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 no. Take no thought. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Shall he not much more clothe you? I want you to say these words after me. Say, my needs are met. My God will provide for the basic needs in my life. I want you to go around your pantry and say, there will be no lack in this house. I want you to go around your closet and your children's closet and say, they will always have every need met. Why? Because God cares for you. So he's starting with these huge benefits of how God wants to protect us. Then it says, verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? And then verse 32 says something, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Everybody that does not have God, pagans, that's what Gentiles means, everybody without God, they wake up every morning early, seeking for jobs, for money, so that they can bring food and clothing to their families and God says only those that don't have me seek after things what makes you and I different is that we don't seek after things what you seek for every day is what proves who is your God that's why in the other video I said make sure that God is first Make sure that you and I are not seeking after things, saying no to God, but saying yes to everything else because we're worried. If I don't work extra hours, I'm not going to be able to make it. If I don't work more hours, I won't have money to make it. And God says, no, those, that's how pagans act. But you, my child, my child, no, you can think different. Why? It says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So what is the job of the children of God that have a father like that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And oh, one man of God says that's the longest word in the Bible. All these things. And in the word all, it's all. All these things shall be added unto you. People that don't have God have to seek after things. But because we have God in our life and He is our Father, He says, seek after me first. Put me first. And instead of seeking after things, that sometimes the economy will not have them available for you because they're so costly. God says, no matter how high gas is going, I will add those things to you. I will make sure that you have every need met for one reason, because you don't seek after things. You seek after God, and you let Him be the one that adds what you need. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my family, and I pray, Father, that you will stir up our heart to change our priorities, 
This is not the time to be seeking after things. This is the time to be seeking after you, putting you first and letting things be added onto us. Oh, you want us to have things. You just don't want us to be seeking after them. You want us to be seeking after you so that you would be the one bringing, adding things unto us. Father, I praise you for this incredible benefit of seeking after you. And even these moments invested in listening to these devotionals, you know the hungry, you know the thirsty, you know the ones that wake up thinking about you, putting their Bible on, not making decisions without talking to you first, going to you first before going to anybody else. Those that put the kingdom of God first, they don't miss church. Father, I thank you because they will see miracles in every need they have. I declare it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, if you would like to sow a seed today, I would invite you to do so. And thank you again for supporting Wisdom for Winning Church. This is a nonprofit, and we will have a uh, letter at the end of the year. So all of your donations matter big time to us. If you would like to sow through Cash App, you can do dollar sign wisdom for the number, wisdom number four, winning, wisdom for winning. If you want to sow through Zelle, it's Pastor Anna at wisdomforwinningchurch.tv. If you would like to mail us, you can use P.O. Box 48588, Wataga, Texas, 76148. And if you would like to sew through PayPal, it is paypal.me forward slash wisdom for winning. Thank you again for joining us. I hope that you'll write me, Pastor Anna, at wisdomforwinningchurch.tv. God bless you and be ready for your next one.